Good evening. In a previous video, we learned how to easily desolder components from an ESP01 module and how to make of these components an ESP do it yourself module that is much better and much more versatile. Today we make some modifications to our module so that it will be especially good for Wi-Fi connections. To start we need one Wi-Fi antenna and few other components. As earlier you can take all those components from an old ESP01 module. For the desoldering of the components you don't have to buy any hot air gun or other special equipment because even an ordinary kitchen plate and an ordinary Teflon frying pan will do. On the very same Teflon frying pan you can also solder components. But afterwards, remember not to use this same Teflon frying pan anymore for cooking food. The small amount of soldering that usually is already on the commercial adapter plates is often much enough. If you anyhow should get some dry joints, try applying some flux, tapping the heated chip a little, moving it back and forth a little, or just applying a small amount of soldering paste. If you find solder bridges, break them with a desoldering wig or mechanically, or by adding some flux next to the solder bridges. It is even possible to remove solder bridges by adding soldering paste. Here I solder directly to the pads of a crystal those two small capacitors that were earlier connected next to the crystal of the ESP01 module. And even with the cheapest soldering iron one can join the both ground pads of a crystal together with a thin wire and after that solder some other two wires to the remaining two corners of the crystal. The ESP do-it-yourself module here is made from the components that we just desoldered. In comparison to our previous breadboard module, this adapter plate has female pin headers with long legs. Next, let's now take a look at the ESP8266EX hardware user guide. On page 19 they recommend that the wires to the crystal oscillator should be short ones. And as you see, the oscillating circuit is now soldered directly to the adapter plate and we indeed do have short wires. And you see that we have here an antenna that lies now on the same plane as the adapter plate. This is something that is emphasized on the page 20 of the hardware user guide. I have strived to make the wires to the antenna straight and that's why I have soldered the wire directly to the pin number 2 of the adapter plate. Our Wi-Fi connections consume up to about 170 milliamperes of current. To help our batteries in this task I have added a pair of 1000 microfarad capacitors to our breadboard. The Wi-Fi access point example program of the previous video is still in this old flash memory chip. And as we now have a good oscillating circuit soldered directly to the adapter plate, we don't this time make any use at all of this old crystal of our previous video. If we now power up the system and reset our program, a Wi-Fi access point called ESPAP appears on the screen of my tablet computer. Let's choose this access point. We must write the password that is given to us in the code of our example program. And the tablet computer now establishes a Wi-Fi connection with our ESP do-it-yourself module. 
Let's test this connection with a browser. The code of the example program says that we should visit the address 192.168.4.1. And indeed, this address shows us a Wi-Fi response that is sent by our ESP do-it-yourself module. Thank you for joining me today. What a fine project. And what next? Here you see a breadboard with 13 LEDs on it. These pin headers go through the breadboard. And if I now connect this simple shield on our ESP do-it-yourself module, we see that we can blink the GPIO pins number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. But 6, 7 and 8 are reserved for the flash memory. We can blink 9 and 10, but 11 is for the flash memory. And we can blink 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. And these 17 pins are all the GPIO pins that an ESP8266 chip has. And as you see, there is no problem to use 13 of them. And look at this chip here. It is a 32 megabit flash memory chip. It is the biggest that an ESP8266 can handle. But more of these good news in the next video. Goodbye.